Anyway, you see that uh, you see that tweet by um, Elon Musk. It was actually, it was actually let's, a little let's bit Let's get into the year. Elon Musk. Uh, Elon yeah. Musk has been a big topic of a couple of conversations for us in the, in the podcast in the past. No doubt. Uh, whether it be new technology or something new coming out with his business or if he's just getting up to fucks. That's right. The last time we talked about him was when he had that sexual assault uh, That's claim right. that was on the plane. Do yes. we have a follow up from that yet? Um, no, okay. <laughs> I don't have a follow up for you, but okay. I just, this, this is a tweet that he had, which I thought was really funny, which, uh, he says he's got, he's changed his, uh, his, I guess his display picture to a bunch of bored apes. And he says, I don't know, seems kind of fungible, <laughs> 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 which I think is hilarious. And, um, dude, he's the king <laughs> of just like. Causing so much ruckus by whether or not he means or not means something. When he posts something on Twitter, yes. people will just deep dive and just... Yeah, sorry. Continue. So, um, I saw actually Gary V respond to this in a YouTube video. And Gary V... And somebody said to Gary V, Oh, well, what do you think about Elon Musk's uh, Twitter... Uh, his tweet? Because, you know, Elon seems to think that they are quite fungible. And then because Gary Vee is such a big uh, NFT sort of backer himself, he said, oh, well, you know, I could, um, I, could, I could take a picture of a Lamborghini and say that I own the Lamborghini, but it doesn't mean I own it. I could take a picture of the Empire State Building and say that I own it, but it doesn't mean I do, right? But I think that there's a flaw to that logic. You, you want me to tell you why? No, I 100% agree with you. Like uh, with a Lamborghini... If you own a Lamborghini, you get to drive a Lamborghini. Yeah. Um, you don't just... The only purpose of it isn't just to show pictures of it to people. With uh, with an NFT, that's really its only purpose. No, it's got utility. That's the part that people sell. Okay. So, when you're buying a board Ape... Yes. Uh, the wholesale... Yes. When you're buying a Nelk NFT or any of these companies making an NFT, it's mm-hmm. because you get exclusive access... To parties that only people can go to when you've got this. Right. You've got, you know, downloadable packs, or you've got this or that, whatever. It comes okay. with stuff. Okay. Uh, every NFT, they've got the roadmap of like the things that they want to achieve and what's going to be accomplished and like what it means uh-huh. to have that NFT. Right. Now, Rhythm and Vines are bringing out an NFT. Okay. Right? Yes. So they've got, I think, let's say they have 50 NFTs coming out. Mm-hmm. One of them is a lifetime pass. Wow. So everyone pays two grand mm-hmm. for a chance to get the lifetime pass. But one of those 50 NFTs mm-hmm. uh, is two year pass, three year pass, five year pass. I see. Or uh, free VIP or yes. whatever. It's kind of like a really expensive raffle. Really expensive <laughs> raffle. That's <laughs> yeah. exactly what it is. Uh-huh. And then. So then, obviously, the lifetime pass yeah. is not worth the two grand. No. But the cheapest thing they have may be worth the two grand. Do you know what I mean? So, okay. Or it might be less. Yes. So when, when you're buying a lifetime pass, obviously, that thing is always going to be worth something. Right. You know? And okay. it will go, it will go uh, up based off the demand as well mm-hmm. and value. So that's the utility. So, if you buy a Lamborghini, you get to drive a Lamborghini. If you buy a board Ape, you get to go board Ape parties. Okay. That's the utility behind <laughs> the NFTs that they try to sell. But <laughs> most of the time, it's not fucking worth it. Like, yeah. all the people at a board Ape party are a bunch of nerdy dudes. Yeah. Like, you, they're a bunch of board Apes, literally. Board Why would apes. you want to go to a board Ape party? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> So that's, saw- <laughs> I'm just saying this. This is the, that's the argument. That's the. It's see. always okay. like. But have you seen the utility? Like yeah. they're gonna do this. Uh-huh. It's always they're gonna do this. Uh-huh. You know. Uh-huh. So that's always why people try to hype up a certain NFT. Right. Like you buy an NFT, they're gonna let us go to space. Like you know. Yes. Has any of have they come right on any of these so, promises so on Nel- anything? So Nelk's done um, private events uh, for all their holders. Yeah, I see. Yeah, and okay. the events they put on look really cool, and they yeah. would have Snoop Dogg come out, and a bunch of people come out, mm-hmm. and people get to see cool DJs, and yeah, it's exclusive. And basically, what they did, I think they did it somewhere either in Newport Beach or in California, somewhere, somewhere, in, somewhere at a beach. Yeah, and it's basically like a block party. Yes, so everyone can see, but you can't get in unless you have the NFT. So you can't even buy a ticket. So a bunch of people are just watching you in a secluded VIP area and you're now colder and that gives you exclusivity and importance and whatever. 
and uh, you get to hang out cool. and you get to do meet and greets and hang out with the boys. So if you're a big Nalk Boys fan, mm-hmm. that makes so much sense to buy that NFT. Right, right, right. Because you get to like potentially meet them and hang out with them and go to their events and like be part of the boys. So for th- it's a great concept for that, I think. I'm just trying to think like if you're creating a, an NFT and you're saying, okay, so we're going to sell 50 of these for $2,000 each, right? Mm. You say you make $100,000. And now, for the rest of your life, you got to be throwing monthly parties for these mofos. See, the thing is, though, that they give away ten thousand. Oh, okay. At two thousand dollars each. Were you going to have a ten thousand person party? Uh, that's how many they they. That's how many passes. Almost every NFT project is between five thousand to ten thousand. Okay. Right. So uh, it is a really big one-off check. Yeah. <laughs> but there's yeah. actually something I wanted to talk about. Um, there's a American. Sorry, I'm sidetracking here. If you want to get back to no, no, fungible tweet, no, that was yeah, that, that was it. okay. Cool, cool, cool. Um, so there was this thing back uh, <clears throat> a while back. I think it was in the 70s or something, or 80s. Um, American Airlines released a lifetime pass. Sweet, uh, 250k. That's so, the price. That's the cost of it. Yeah. So okay. uh, there was this guy. Who bought the American? Do you mind just searching that up for us as well? I just want to make sure I've got all the uh, yeah. information correct. Mm. So he bought. He was a rich dude, obviously. Mm. You know, multi-millionaire dude. Mm-hmm. Uh, makes sense for him to do that. You know, sure. to spend two fifty. Yeah. Once off, um, and yeah. then uh, you can also spend one fifty and and get a partner. Uh-huh. So he got his daughter one. Oh, cool! Because she's young, so she can now travel with him, and when he passes, she'll be able to travel. Yeah. For the rest of her life. Yeah. The ROI is good on a young person. Huge ROI. Yeah. Huge ROI. So basically what they did, this guy bought the tickets and he's like, well, I bought it. Yeah. I'm a user. And this guy yeah. flew fucking everywhere. <laughs> Just went hard. Spent his 250 quick. You yeah, know? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. 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 Like got like his money's yeah. worth <laughs> ready to go. Yeah. Yeah. Why wouldn't you just fly first class fucking anywhere? Yeah. Just fly first class wherever you wanted, whenever you wanted. I'd fly so much, man. Yeah. Like, if you're already a multimillionaire, have a couple of businesses, you don't necessarily be, need to be in an office. Yeah. This You'd just be flying everywhere. You'd fly from one place to the next to the next. Of course. Just work from your laptop. You've I mean, essentially got a free private jet. That's yeah. essentially the situation. <laughs> yeah. Now, that's really expensive to have. Yeah. A free, pri- you know, a private jet. You're paying for your fuel. No doubt. Uh, that you know. 250 would run out pretty quick on a private jet. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. five flights max. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, consider that from first class, the food he eats, everywhere he's traveling, all the costs covered. Mm. Uh, so, basically, uh, so basically, uh, after a couple of years, yes, uh, they just canceled it. And uh, what? they just broke contract. Get out. <laughs> they broke the contract. They were just like, nah, no yeah. more for you, dog. What? No more for you. Bro, um, that's a that's a lawsuit. It, so he goes into a lawsuit. Okay. He goes into a lawsuit. Um, this is actually a really... There's no happy ending here, to be honest. Okay. okay. Why it's not surprising that the AA took this man's lifetime AA pa- air pass away. So, basically... Um, whoever came up with this idea is definitely fired. Yeah. Because he reached his ROI and then they just yeah. started paying for him to like do this shit for years. <laughs> well, that's the whole thing. He was like listed on their uh, American Airways as like, keep an eye on this passenger. Like oh. they were recording and making sure like they knew how much this guy was fucking flying because he was flying everywhere. Was... Do we have some? Yeah. So... Successful stockbroker purchased their uh, air pass for a fee of two hundred and fifty thousand. A companion pass for an additional one hundred and fifty thousand. After twenty one <laughs> years of traveling the world and racking up the miles because of uh, because travel on an AA air pass uh, accrued uh, miles, yeah, yeah, yeah. as well as Robertstein was stripped of the pass in two thousand and eight for uh, speculative bookings, according to the latest uh, recirculation yeah. of the tale in the Guardian. He then sued the airline a year later for $7 million in damages. No, that's the funny part, right? Wow. <laughs> so the pass is actually worth $7 million, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right? Well, to him, it's actually worth more. But, but the thing is, he, he had to go and figure out how much he's been flying over 21 years versus yeah. how much he would still have the pass for and the companion pass or whatever. Yeah. What is the price on that look like? What's possible to achieve? You know what I mean? So for it's not sure. two fifty, it's seven milli, and that's probably underselling it. 
yeah. of what the pass should have cost him. All right. After years of back and forth, the judge finally ruled in favor of the airline. Yeah. No way. Uh, but that obviously hasn't stopped the story from making headlines, which is why we... Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Forget about that. Anyway. Um, <clears throat> that is crazy. Yeah, so they won. Um, but I guess this guy, you know, it's hard to, uh, it's hard to feel bad for him. Apparently, he was really depressed after this lifetime pass. Mm. But think about it. He's suing for seven million. Mm-hmm. He paid two fifty, mm-hmm. and he probably spent millions. Yeah, like I think you got your your worth. But also, the airlines, you know, still though, man, you can't make as, a promise like that. That's exactly right. Yeah. And I think this is just a good uh, example of what's going to happen with so many of these NFT nfts ah uh, yes I see. like you said yeah how many parties are now now gonna throw for these fucking ten thousand holders yeah these guys are not these are diehard Nalk fans for sure do you know what they like destruction <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> like, that's what they're about yes um, i almost feel like if you've got an nft project and you've let's say sold all ten thousand of these nfts and you've promised all these people a lifetime membership to all of these parties if you sell that business on you're not even selling an asset. You're selling a liability at this point. You're selling point. a liability, yeah. Because it's like the money's already been made. How do you make any more money on this? You don't. It's the holders that might be able to sell them on for more. You've yeah. made all the money up front. Now you've just got a liability. It's like if Netflix came out and been like one off, you know, $3,000. Yeah. And then like after a couple of years, they just stop making the fucking, the money stops. Yeah. Now also picture this, right? Maybe this is what they put into it. Uh-huh. Um, you know, we're selling it to kids. Those kids have got to grow up. They're eventually going to stop coming to the parties. The meta card eventually will just phase out, right? <laughs> Unless wow. they just start, you know, the, the now they just have to keep their promise and keep their own parties for 40 year old dudes when they're like in their 60s <laughs> or whatever, or their 50s, just like, fuck, we've got that obligation, bro. We yeah. still have to throw parties for this dudes because this is what we said we were going to do if they pay this stupid fee. Yes. Yeah, lifetime exactly. subscription. We have to keep giving them Netflix. We have and to let's keep say you get them- married, you get too old or whatever. You can, you don't you're not interested in the parties anymore. You just sell it. Some other idiot buys it for a million dollars, and they're expecting a, their own lifetime's worth of parties. You keep selling that yeah. NFT on. These guys have to throw parties literally forever. 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 <laughs> yeah. I mean, unless they expire, they, NFTs can't fucking expire. <laughs> they just go up in value, and it's the royalties that the original owner makes money off. So every time. Yeah. This card is sold on, like you said, like for a million. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, if he bought it for two k and then he bought it, uh, sold it for fifty k. Yeah, they get royalties a percentage on the fifty k sale. Yeah. So every time it's sold for more, they have more. You know, they get more percentage of it. I see. But that the problem will be that these guys are already too old to be doing what they're doing. We know because yeah. we're roughly their age. Yes. We know exactly what yeah. these guys have They'll done. They'll be left getting tired. Tank. Yeah. <laughs> Carl from Nelk is 29 or 30. Oh, okay, yeah. He's and getting this guy tired. is still sending like a 21-year-old. Yeah. He's got two years absolute maximum, I reckon. For sure. Before he'll need blood infusions from children <laughs> yeah. just to get by. He already looks, no offense to Carl, we love you, but he already looks older than he is. Because of all the sending he's been doing. I know what that look of his face is. <laughs> yeah. I know what it looks like to come off a bender. You can yeah. just see the this and you're like, you look older, dude. <laughs> like yeah, For do. a short period of time, you look older. If you stop drinking mm. alcohol for a long time as well, yeah. you start looking younger. You come well. back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you're not destroying so many of the cells that are constantly trying to reproduce. Mm. But anyway, <laughs> he's uh, he can't be doing that shit forever, you know? And if you sell the company, like you said... Yeah. It comes with the liability of people that can just continue yes. to do that. And if they don't sell it for enough money, mm. then the royalties you're getting, or if they don't, if none of these guys sell them at all and just yeah. hold get, on to them, pass them down to their son, yeah. that's the worst thing that can happen. <laughs> yeah. if every single one of those guys just have like a ceremony where they're just like, yeah. pass it on to your son. Yeah. He just gets it for free, no sold royalties, and there's just yeah. a whole nother 30, 40 gen- years of generation of just. <laughs> Fucking partying and milk parties. And I bet you, from knowing those guys, they probably promised them, like, something from every merch drop. Yeah. Does that mean they have to do a merch drop, like, for eternity now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every month for eternity? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, they're going to have to do that. You know, if it's something like the UFC. Yeah. And you get a UFC pass. Yeah. That makes sense, because you can keep selling the UFC pass. Dana White isn't... It's a company. Yes. You know? And you can sell off the UFC... It has its own way of making a shit ton of money as well. No doubt. Whereas I feel like this Metacard thing is a 
is way more difficult to do because the the content that they're selling isn't competitive sports no it's the not the content they're selling has a limited source like it, it, it they can only produce this until they can no longer let's say they die yes when dana white dies there's still gonna be people fighting oh yeah when they when they yeah. die there's no more people making the prank videos unless they just keep the channel to keep getting younger prank guys in. but eventually it's not the same thing anymore that's right i mean like look look at jackass now yeah yeah exactly you know? it's that was that was hard to watch uh, yes. some of the new guys like they're funny but it's not jackass it's not uh what's the can you i don't know how to research this but the boat when you this is an analogy mm. you know um there's a theory mm-hmm. of uh a boat uh that they would have to replace each wood because the wood would rot each plank of wood okay now at what point Yes. Uh, if you've replaced every plank of wood, is it still the original boat? <sighs> well, I suppose it's not. Yeah. I suppose it's not. Can, um, you, can you get up the video of the same axe for me? The same axe. The same axe. The same This axe. is a skit by uh, a New Zealand comedian, actually. Okay. I'd uh, like to see this. And it, it sums up the, the theory that I'm trying to explain pretty quickly. Uh, interesting question to your the- to that theory of uh, if you replace everything on a ship is it still the same ship yeah you know that uh every cell in your body is also replaced at least every eight months yeah that's also the discussion i think with that theory is yes that, yeah is if that essentially are- every year you are an entirely different organism that's right yeah <laughs> so at what point well we retain information Yes. So it's different mm. because as a human, you retain information. So a part of the old you is still. Yeah, but how real is that information? I mean, it's just a memory. That's it's, right. It's if you went back to those same places, the same people are no longer there. But isn't a memory still enough? Like the boat doesn't have, like if the boat had all the planks replaced, but still had the same picture that was part of the boat mm-hmm. in the boat, mm-hmm. then at least that picture is from the original boat. Yeah. But if every wooden plank is replaced, which is the physical part of the boat. Yes. At some point, it will no longer be the same boat. And at what point? Great question. It's from Moon TV. All right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think I remember Moon TV. This is the same axe. Yeah. So this axe had this since 1954. I've split pine cones with it. All sorts of things over on the Westland. Now it's only had uh, five, five new uh, heads to it and about six handles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, so it's not really the same axe then, is it? It's, it's had different... It, it's not the same axe. <laughs> it's the same axe. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I suppose it's the same axe. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, five new funny. blades and only about uh, yeah. uh, six, six new, new handles. handles. So it's, yeah. it's multiple different axes, actually. <laughs> but then at the end, he realizes he's trying to argue with a guy with an axe. Yeah. <laughs> he was half uh, split pine cones with it. Yeah. And uh, other things. 